Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's begin. Inshallah. So again, that's the Ibn Muhammad. What are you so This is a very um, blessed gathering, a very special gathering because we focus all of our energy on our most beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it is always, you know, so anchoring, and it always feels so much peace to, you know, find that in our hearts. And to do an activity around that. So, inshallah, um, let's begin. So, you've seen this symbol, mashallah, many times in your life. And um, it's a blessed symbol because it represents the shape of the Prophet Muhammad, his blessed sandal, which is called Na'al or Na'alain. So, Na'alain is like two sandals. And then you have a Na'al, is, I believe, one sandal. So, um, they're blessed because they were under the feet of the most perfect creation. And also there are those who um, who entered into Jannah. So these sandals also entered into the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they have a very deep significance um, to us. And because we do not use um, pictorial representation in Islam, like we don't make like a other religious characters, they make depictions of um, of people. We don't do that. So we use symbolism. And the symbolism is, a, it creates a connection for us that represents one thing to another. So we're going to, inshallah, make this and I'm going to help you um, and we're going to walk through it. Okay. So I told you you need a few sheets of paper. Can everybody hear me okay? Just give me a, a bismillah in the in the chat. And okay, if you can hear me. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is how are we going to make this look so even, you know, this is hard to do visually. So we're going to use a support. Um, Bismillah, thank you. Okay, so um, we're going to use a support to make sure that we get it even. And I'm sure you've all done this and we've done other activities like this in the past where we take our piece of paper and we all we fold it right in half the long way because we're going to do this on a portrait. So we're going to fold it in half the long way. So we're going to essentially make it the same way we we make a heart. We cut out a heart. And I'm going to remove this background so you can see the contrast between my messy art table and my pristine white paper. Um, so, so we're going to have it the long portrait way. And we're going to be thinking about making half of this. And we're going to think about proportions. So this is this bottom half is more than um, um, this top half is more than one half. Right, so it's the past the one half mark, um, and then we have the shape. It's going to go out like this, and we also don't want it exactly the full length of our paper because we're going to draw on it. So we're going to intentionally like make a mark on the sh on the top of our sheet that say, okay, we're going to say this is our starting point, or maybe even lower, if you, depending on how much frame space you want around it. So you're going to put a dot about right there. And then from the bottom of that, you yeah, should sure, take your time. You're going to do another dot like that. So we're just that all that is meant to do is um, marking the top and bottom of your paper. So you know where you're going to begin the now and where it's going to end. Okay, so let's see. Okay, um, sorry, you don't need your colors yet. You just really need your pencil now. And I don't know why, but I tend to start from the bottom. Um, so if that, you can watch me first. And then if you feel like it will work for you better going from the top down, um, I just find that it gives me more perspective when I know how much I put here than, than what's how, you know, how long it's gonna be here. And we're not using a ruler, but if I did, on this part we're not but if if i did like if this middle part we would say is it about six and a quarter and then the rest of it down to the very bottom is about four and a quarter so that would make it about ten and a half um this one 
but it goes to show like the top part is two inches um, larger than the bottom portion essentially. So I'm going to start at the bottom and, and I'm not going to keep to this. So I might even tweak it, but I'm giving myself a rough shape. And then once I cut it out, I can tweak it. Um, so I'm going to go out like this first. You can use your ruler here, but we're going to be cutting this. So it's, you know, you don't have to. So you basically make this line that goes like this. Uh, on an angle. It's like a little slope. So imagine we're making a hill. It would just be like that. Okay. All right, Sarah. So um, basically, we just marked the top and the bottom of this. Um, sorry. We just marked the top and the bottom for this now, um, how much space going to be because right now we're cutting out a template. We're going to cut out a template so we can trace our template so that it's even on both sides. So right now we're only drawing half on a folded sheet of paper. So we took one sheet of paper and we folded it in half. And then um, we're only going to be drawing half on this side. And when we cut it out, that will make both sides even. OK. All right. So I already have the bottom here. And now I'm going to go up like this. And I already see that like I went out too far there. So I'm going to erase this and I'm going to smooth it out. But essentially the shape is correct, but the, but I went out too far. I have to unplug this because the, the plug is pulling on my phone and moving it around. So part of, I'm trying actually a new system so that it's more of a wide angle view, but I don't know how well that system's working guys. Anything new is usually, you know, a change and adjustment. I think that's right. Okay, so I'm gonna try it like that. That so that's my main shape like this. And I wanted to have that pointy tip. So make sure when you go to the top, you 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 go right to the edge. And then once I cut it is when I'm gonna get real um, clear about if it's you know, the right shape for me, you know, the correct shape. It should look like this full. So this is about half of this, right? So it's essentially the same. Okay, so Aisha, um, what we did so far is we're cutting out a um, template for our knob. Okay, and the way we did that is we folded um, a piece. So if any, if pe people already did that, go ahead and start cutting out your, over your lines from both sides. So you're gonna cut through both layers while I explain to, to um, Amira. Okay, um, so Amira, so um, you're gonna take a piece of paper and you're gonna fold it in half the long way like this. And then um, you're gonna mark where the top and the bottom of your now is gonna go. And then you're going to just trace the same way you've, I'm sure you've made a heart before with construction paper and you draw half the heart. Um, you could even do that, like you could put a heart in the middle here and then you could cut it out and then you could trace that. So that would be also very cute. But um, you could, um, so then once you fold it, then the first you're going to make a line that goes up like this, like a hill, and then it's going to go in and around and then it's going to go up into the tip. So you're basically drawing half the shape. And the reason is because um, we want it to be completely symmetrical. So this is also a good tip for you to have if you ever want to make like a special garland for your, for your home that has a bunch of this symbol um, hanging on a string, you know, between the doorway, um, you can make a bunch of little ones like this and put a hole puncher and hang and string them up in different colors and it can be very festive. Um, for Eid and things like that. So, um, okay, so I hope that helped Amira, okay? If, if just watch what we're doing and then inshallah you'll, you'll find your way to, to catch up to it. It's, we haven't gotten much. We folded a piece of paper, we drew half the shape and now I'm gonna cut through both, both sides of that. Bismillah. Okay, 
so now I have my half side, but it's actually full side. Bismillah, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Alhamdulillah, I'm happy with the shape. There's like a few little, um, it's more of a, a cutting error that I made. Instead of cutting smoothly, I had uh, some jagged parts, so I'm going to make sure I smooth it out. And now I'm going to support this paper because when you do it right on paper, sometimes like for I have like eraser marks and um, so I like to put an, uh, sometimes one or two sometimes pieces of paper underneath. So it's a smooth, smooth surface. So give me a bismillah uh, when you got to this stage, when you're happy with it. So um, I should give you an example if you're not happy with it. Let me put a darker background so you can see looks like so you can also use this shape after right so you can do something with this too um but okay this is the shape not yet okay bismillah okay we've got some bismillahs and okay so this is what it would look like but if you find that um like, look my edges are still not so smooth right there so if you weren't happy with it something didn't um look right to you then this is your chance to just even it out with the scissor. Or if you if you realize, oh, something's really wrong, like it's not proportional. For example, this part might stick out way, way beyond this part, which is wouldn't be the way it looks. So um, you can just draw another line here and then just trim over it again, inshallah. Okay. So now my template is ready, inshallah. I have some let's see for the actual an empty sheet of paper. I show oh, it's beautiful. Nice, thank you for showing me. It's gorgeous. So much love, so much love. Okay. So now we're gonna find the center of our paper. So when we lay down our template, it's you know in the center of our paper. So this is eight and a half. So I'm gonna put eight and a quarter. I'm oh, sorry, four and a quarter as my um, as my center. So I basically know where. Like I'll I'll take my crease and then I'll make sure it's kind of hovering right above that dot that I made. And then I'm just eyeballing what's the top and the bottom. Um, in terms of distance. And then um, I'm going to hold it down with my left hand. So it just depends. Are you lefty or righty? Um, so I'm a righty. So I'm going to hold it with my left hand and I'm going to trace around the edge carefully. Um, and I'm not going to um, press really hard. I'm just going to press lightly. Um, and you can kind of like tilt your um, pencil so that it uses that ledge as a trace um, and it helps kind of glide it along like the same way a ruler helps you make the line it's a very thin edge but you can kind of rely on it to help to help trace the line Oops, sometimes it'll go over. Let's see if I got all the parts. All right, so mine looks pretty faint, but um, I'm fine with that. And if you missed a few patches, you can fill those in because at that point you have enough ability to see the overall shape. So now we have this guideline here. Okay. All right. Take your time. I think at this point, just everyone, let's collect ourselves. So wherever you're at in the process, just pull pull yourself to that point, um, to this point here that I'm at, and then from here, we'll that's when we'll we'll collect and go to the next stage. Inshallah. Yeah. 
But when you are um, to this point, just um, give me a bismillah, inshallah, I'll, um, that'll give me a clue. Yes, you can use construction paper, sure. We're gonna be doing a pattern on it. So if you're gonna use construction paper, you're gonna to have to use a more saturated, like a darker, probably coloring agent, like a, like a marker. So if you have a thin tip marker, that would work best, but definitely work with what you have. And there's probably so many ways to do this um, project with so many materials. It would be nice to make a sun catcher, you know, with the, con the clear contact paper and and put the colored tissue paper inside it would be so beautiful we could do colored tissue paper and make a like a pattern like this inside so many so many projects so do it your way oh mashallah alia good okay so i got two bismillahs three bismillahs Oh, good to see you. You made it. Yay. And Sarah, okay. Bismillah. All right, good. Wow, everybody's doing good. Caught up. All there. All right, so now we're going to use our cup and we're basically going to find the center of, we have the top part and we have the bottom part. Um, you can decide if you have like two different sizes. Maybe you want to use a bigger size down here and a smaller size down here. I used the same the same size. I might have even used this jar, I think. So um, I'm going to find kind of the center, more or less, of this middle section. So this is about five and a quarter. So two and a half plus one is going to be my center. No, that's not the center. Sometimes the ruler says something center, but what, visually you can tell it's not. So I don't know. Is it just me? So I'm going to now, because this is clear, so it's really helpful. I can see my, I can line the top, the middle portion of my jar with the middle portion of my, and it's always best to stand up at this point, actually, because you get your best um, angle on these things when you stand. Um, and now I'm gonna trace my circle. And I went off the line a little bit. That's gonna make a little extra line, but no problemo. Hmm, why do I feel like it's not looking center? Huh. Uh, what proportion circle are we looking for? Well, I guess you can see, I, it, I, I guess like any type of mug or like maybe more like a drinking glass would be a better um, size. I think a mug tends to be a little bit wider, but you know how drink, drinking glasses are sort of tall and narrow? So I think I, I think mine was off a little bit, so I'm, I'm redoing it. Though all those lines will get covered by um, the writing we're gonna do and, and also coloring and things, so I'm not worried about it. I'd rather have this where I want it to be. Let's see if I got it right. Much better. Okay. So, whoa, my job got stuck here. Okay, so you want to repeat the steps before tracing the circle. I missed the start of class and you just joined. Oh, Senna. Okay, so um, Senna, Okay, so while everyone um, makes their circle, so you can also go ahead and make your second circle while I explain to Senna, okay? Um, so Senna, this is what's up. Say bismillah, inshallah. And we're gonna first take a piece of paper, the long way uh, portrait, and we're gonna fold it in half long. We're gonna match up our corners. Okay, so now we have this, um, and, and just the best reference point is like when you uh, fold a piece of paper to cut out a heart, right? So, you know, you fold it, so you make symmetrical two sides. So what we're trying to make is a symmetrical template for you to trace so that you can draw it. Are you with me on that, Senna? Give me a, a hello, yes, good? Yes, good, yeah, awesome. So, so now we have 
so this is what we're making out of this, right? So once you have that folded, you're gonna make a line that goes up like a hill with this. So this is the bottom part of the Na'al, the sandal of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of the, we say Mithal because we don't say it's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's sandals. So they call it a Mithal. It's, a, it's an example or representation of the Holy Prophet's sandal. So um, we have to be very careful with our words um, in, this, in these topics. So, um, so first you make a, a slant like that. And then you go in like this and you go up like that, okay? So you have um, one side. And then what you'll do, and, and the purpose of doing that is to make sure you have a symmetrical template. Then what you do is you're gonna cut it out. And then when you open it, you'll have this. Does that make sense, sense Anna? That That's all good, perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my second circle and Waiyaki. I'm gonna try and match this up to the one on top. Okay, it's, whoa, good job getting stuck on here. Okay, so now I have my overall template. So if you're there, and Senna, I know you're you're catching up. I think I think you're quick, and you're gonna you're gonna get done with that fast. Uh, yours is not as pointed as yours. Is that okay? Uh, yes, it is okay. But you can um, also adjust it. Like once you fix it, if you wanted it pointier, you can make it that way. So it's not too late. Now is the time to change it if you weren't you know, happy with it. So basically you could erase it and you can make a triangle shape, but it might just be fine. I've seen different methyl of the Nalin that has a rounded section on the on the top. So, so you can feel completely authentic about that. Sure. Okay, so once you're here and things open here. Okay, so I have a, these circles. I want to find the center of my circle. Um, this is two and a half. So I'm going to do if this obviously this is two and a half. So I'm going to do one and a quarter as my center here. I know that's the center from left to right but I also have to find the center from top to bottom. A perfect circle is the same, um, you know, all around. So if it's two and a half left to right, it's gonna be two and a half top to bottom. Okay. Then sometimes, really honestly, standing up just really helps you see things better. It's going to give you the best angle, OK? And then you're going to do the same thing um, on the one on top. Just find the center of your circle best you can. All right, so, so then once you feel like you found the center of each circle, then just um, we'll make sure everybody's caught up and you're eyeballing, that's fine. Actually, so this is this pattern, I'm sure it has in Islamic geometry, a technical name. So there's like rosettes and stars and five point and seven star to 10 point and stars, I pick many technical names. I'm not an expert in that art form. Um, so this, but that art form takes a lot of training and you have to know your points. So you have anchor points and you use, um, 
you use a protractor and you make many, many circles. So it's a circle from here and then it's a circle from there and a circle from there. And then after a while, you start to connect your, your lines from certain points. And that's how they, they build these. And theirs is perfectly symmetrical if it's done right. Um, ours is going to be our, our gesture toward these, um, those type of arts, which take, um, which take more training, they take more time and they take um, expertise and other skills as well. So um, we're gonna just focus on doing it this way. Is it gonna, no, this is not gonna be hard. I'm not doing it that way. This is the simple way, okay? So once you found um, your, your dot in the middle, let me just show you here. Um, we're going to, we're going to first be making a crisscross. So we're going to be making, so imagine my dot was under here. Okay. What I did is I just made two lines, one on the left of it and one on the right of it. Then we made a line this way, one uh, under it and one above it. And then I just did one diagonal and one diagonal this way. So when you break it down, it's it's very, very simple. And I did eyeball this, but if you wanted to see how, um, you know, what's the distance from here to here, you know, you could measure it and make those marks before you, um, before you trace. Uh, so what I did here is, I know this is now my center. So I'm gonna make a, a line to the left of it. And you kind of always, always have to measure in the space that the tip of your pencil takes. Um, it's gonna not be exactly where the ruler is because it takes space, right? The lead itself. So I'm gonna factor that in. So I'm gonna make a line here. And inshallah, I'm gonna make a line here. No, mine doesn't look as centered as I'd love, but um, we're gonna make the best of this. <laughs> And then once you have that line, I'm, if you feel like I'm getting ahead, don't panic because I'm just trying to get you to see where I'm going with this, you know, so that it makes sense to you. And then I'm going to talk you through it. Okay, so basically I have a crisscross like that. Some people say crisscross applesauce. Do you say that? I don't know. Your cup is really big. Um, so maybe you could just find any object. I mean, there's so many circular objects around. Just look around the room and find something like maybe the lid of a jar, um, a can, like a can of beans or something um, would work. That would be a good size. If you can grab something. Okay, so, and then, okay, Bismillah, they are good. All right, let me wait for a few other Bismillahs because I, I don't want to go ahead um, without everyone. Oh, you say crisscross applesauce when you said, okay. Yeah, Bismillah, Bismillah. I, yeah, I don't know where I picked it up. I think when I was homeschooling, um, there was a poem we used to say, crisscross applesauce. It was like spiders going up, down up my back, something like that. It was just a little nursery rhyme for kids. And it just every time I say crisscross now, I think applesauce. <laughs> I said it so many times. Okay, so Bismillah. So now that we did um, um, horizontal and, um, and vertical, um, now we are going to go um, diagonal one and you're just basically trying to make it similar with it's all about intersections and things like that um, with this art form I highly respect people that can do this art form. I, um, I've done it, I've made these patterns like from scratch and things like that, but it just, it takes a lot of patience and I guess it's too thick. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm gonna do another one that goes, so everything is going around this middle circle. This one's much bigger. Yeah, we're gonna work with it. We're gonna work with what we got here, guys. It's not exactly how I wanted it, but it's happening. Okay. I'm making one, one of them look too thin compared to the others, so I was just thickening that one up. So now I have basically a shape. I have one going up and down, and one going across, and two crisscross applesauce. You got that done? Okay, so now we have this shape. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing down here. I think we should group our activity instead of now focusing on details here. Let's do this same thing on top down here. However, if you don't wanna do the same thing on top as you do on the bottom, maybe you wanna make a flower on the bottom. Maybe you wanna make hearts. Maybe you wanna do something else. So um, I also invite you to think about it in your own design. If you don't wanna do the exact same thing on the bottom as we do everything on the top, feel free to um, you know, create your own design. But I'm gonna repeat this. And I can use these guides on the top to sort of help, you know, if that's, if, the, if I'm happy with the lines on the top, then they will help me on the bottom. So now I have, you know, basically the same shape on the top and the bottom. And then, yeah, sure. So, so let's take a rest now. It's a salawat break. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Allahumma salli ala Okay. Okay, Bushra, let me know when you feel like comfortable to move on. I want everyone to feel uh, at a good pace. Inshallah. And Sana, um, did you, um, thanks for the Bismillah. Now I know um, where people are. Sana, did you catch up? Bismillah from California. <laughs> I like it. Where else are people bismillahing from? Where are you from? Bismillah. Shout out your state, your country, your nation. Bismillah from California. Hey, word. Yay. Never been. No, I drove through there. I've never stayed. California as well. New Jersey. That's close. California. Mashallah. Fun. Okay, so Dallas, Texas. Nice. Wow, nice. We got East Coast, West Coast, South. Amira, how's that going? How did hold it up? Nice. Good job. 
California. Wow, California's winning out. Uh, Bismillah from San Diego, California. Wow, California. How's the weather, Yusra? Oh, yeah, how is the weather? Texas. Nice. Baltimore. Good. And if you caught up or you feel like you had a good space now, give me a, yeah, it's like that here too, 45. Um, give me a bismillah. If you feel like we can proceed, inshallah. Bismillah, okay. Bismillah, all right. Bismillah, and Amira. All right, so, all right, if you can see here, I'm gonna, if where these intersect is they start to make these little diamond shapes. So you'll see here. So what we're going to try and do here is basically I'm making it darker. Um, I guess I can't zoom in too much. Um, and then I'm going to try and copy that same diamond shape here and here. Do you see how now it's starting to make like a star? So you see where those intersect. So if my lines are a little bit off, I'm sort of fixing them. Cause like, for example, these did not intersect like center. So I'm just making it center when I build my own little star. Does that make sense? So you see where the little V's meet in between where these intersections happen. You just make those a little bit darker. So now I have this star that sort of looks like this. And then if you feel like it doesn't look even, you can just sort of tweak it to make it look even. So when they do it with per perfect um, calligraphy, it's perfect. They, it's in a perfect star. Um, inshallah, maybe one day we'll do that. As, as we get older together and we grow in our art skills, we will make all the stars together. And they will be, they'll do real, you know, the traditional way. And I'm gonna do it down here. I'm gonna build up this, these lines to make this star. Your flower thing is not very good. Mine, I'm not so happy with mine on the top, but mine on the bottom is pretty decent. But once you color it in and stuff, um, you can also um, fix it. So just do your best to kind of like, now that you have the main shape, then just try and tweak it. Cause it's, you're pretty free to fix it now without damaging any of your structure. So feel free. I'm gonna, um, and also, if you don't like it at all, you can like make it a circle, you can cover it. You don't have to be stuck with it. Just cover it if you don't like it. You can make it a circle. You can even just erase it and make it a heart, or you could make it like a swirl. Make it into a different pattern that you are happy with, because I want you to be happy with it. Okay. How's that, Amira? Nice. Anybody else want to show theirs? I can't see too well. Can you hold it closer, Muzakir? Oh, that looks good. Good job. Yeah, there's some light. Oh, it looks really nice. Very good. Good. Nice, Alia. Oh, that looks good, Alia. Good. Good. We're not, we're not even done. So once we continue, um, you're going to be more and more happy with it. Okay. Promise. Okay. So, so now at the end of these, so you see here, I also like added these triangles at the end. Oh, beautiful. Look at how pretty. Nice work. Mashallah, gorgeousness. 
So um, now on the end of these, I'm going to do the same and kind of follow that same pattern. And it makes it look, you know, more tailored, the design. So I'm going to do it like this V shape at the end of each one of these. Like that. And then down here too. Some of the flaws, they sort of just, you can't see the flaws as much once your whole composition is done, unless you're really looking for them. But initially too, I feel like, oh, maybe my star is not totally equal. But as you keep drawing, it's like you're adding so much beauty that um, it just, it, it just reduces any focus on anything that is, might be a little imperfect. Let's see. Oh, it's gorgeous. Wow, Mira, it came out really, really good. Really nice. Sadia, can you hold it closer? Oh, nice. Everybody did really well. Your top right is good. The flower. Okay. All right, good. Uh, Khadija, I'm glad. Thank you for showing me. Okay, so now we have this shape. All right, now what I did is I did these hearts in the middle. Um, and they're like two connecting hearts like us and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our heart is always connected, inshallah. So how do you want to design it? You can add that design or you can add like, um, for example, like say I wanted to draw these and then say I wanted to do it more like this, like kind of a four leaf clover, but hearts type of thing. So you could do something, add something in the middle or you can add some other pattern or design. I think I'm just going to leave mine without this section now, but I'm going to leave this here for you for a second if you want to add a pattern in the middle. Beautiful, Khadija. Wow. You're going to do two hearts? Okay, good. Nice, Yusra. It looks beautiful. MashaAllah. And then um, we're gonna start the writing portion. So this is when you have to really warm your heart up with the furnace of love of the Prophet ﷺ. Just warm it up. Yeah, you put your hands in front of the fire to warm them up after they've been cold. Our hearts, they get cold, they get distant, they get far away. They're so icy, like we're on the slopes, the ski slopes. But then we go to our warm furnace of love of the Prophet ﷺ. It warms our heart and it melts the ice and it softens our skin and it re restores the moisture. So um, that's when we're going to return our heart to the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in um, reflecting on his blessing that he is to us and our feelings for him and our thoughts about him and our love for him ﷺ. And that should come from you. I can't tell you how to feel. You already have a perfectly pure heart because you are a child. So children are perfect, mashallah. Um, you have perfect hearts. Your hearts are mashallah, shining and glowing and full of nature. So um, you have the most wonderful heart to write the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you can think about it in the way you're going to write the Prophet وسلم, to him, or you're going to be writing about him, or you want to just express your feelings about how you feel about the Prophet Muhammad وسلم. But we also want to think about our artistic composition here. So, um, and this one, I decided to swirl around this um, middle circle. But I think today, because I did this, so I want you to know that that's an option. But in this one, I think what I'm going to do is go around it and then just follow it in lines and it will just fill up like that. And then like maybe some end around here. I'm not really sure, but um, I also need to think about, okay, how much do I feel like I'm going to write? Am I going to write 
the same thing over and over again, which is fine. Am I going to just write and write and write? How much do I want to write? Because that's going to be a lot to write. So I might want to write bigger so that it, it's going to take the space, but I also don't have to take up the space. So I could write one line around the edge and then I could write some lines in the middle. Maybe I'll do it like that. Hmm. But the most important thing is to warm your heart. Um, you have to warm your heart and then you listen, right? Because mashallah, you're children. So you're still in touch with the angels. Like angels still love to be around you. You're sinless, you know, you mashallah, you radiate nature. So you have a lot, a lot of angels around you. Angels always love to be around children and they're there to protect children because children, you know, they don't know everything yet. And sometimes, you know, they can make act, have accidents or they have don't have knowledge of something so there's many angels to protect you so um, you have to quiet your mind and just um, tap into you know the angel world I'll say and just you have to allow that spirit that energy to um, allow you to speak you know allow you to express your feelings so I'm going to try and do that, inshallah, and I'm just going to not judge myself. Like what I say should just come naturally from my heart. And that's called free form poetry writing. Um, I'm going to begin by saying, because this is a star shape, and I think I'll start at the top. So I'll make the Y like this, you are the star of my heart. And I wanna think about my script. Do I wanna write, I think I want it to look like, I think it's called romantic script when you have script that looks like this. Cause you know, in the old days when people used to write letters to their beloved and they were at war, they used to write like, you know, like this. And so I think that's called a romantic script. Um, I think I'm going to write in the romantic script. So um, I'm going to write you are the star. Of my heart. Period. I'll probably go over this again with my pen. So I'm not worried that it's sort of light. Um, you are a star of, of my heart. Your light never fades. So uh, I think I want to leave you to say what you want to say. So do you feel like okay to write on your own or do you feel like I should share what I'm writing? Tell me how you feel about that. What What's better in terms of writing? I wish I could zoom in, but I put I put this on spotlight so that um, the page wouldn't flicker. And it seems like with spotlight, I'm um, I'm not able, maybe if I undo. Let me remove this spotlight and then I, I might be able to um, zoom in. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay. So now we're going to keep writing. Um, this is a light of your sincerity. Your sincerity taught us sincerity. 
which we seek. Which we seek and only find in following you. What else do I want to say? My dearest, you know, our prophet Salaam, is really our true, true friend. Um, like, um, because he's the, he's a Sadiq Al-Amin. Al Amin. So the Prophet Sallallahu was the Sadiq Al Amin. He's the truthful one. So you know, in the word, the word friend in Arabic is Sadiq, and it comes from Sadiq or Sidq, and it means to be truthful. So because the Prophet Sallallahu is the most truthful, he's also the best friend, because it's your best friend who's going to be honest to you. And he, the Prophet ﷺ, always told us the truth, um, even if that's a little hard for us, right? So sometimes there's things that we have to do um, that we wouldn't choose for ourselves. But he taught us what is best for us. And that takes somebody who really, really, really loves you to tell you what you should do, um, even when you don't always feel like that's what your mind thought you should do. So I was saying, um, my, my dearest friend, and I don't mean my friend like, oh, this is my friend, when we talk about any other friend. The Prophet Sallallahu is my master, he's my prophet, he's my guide, but I just mean he's my most sincere counsel. And in some poetry, you're not a uh, romantic script, you're doing cursive. Yeah, I don't even know what this is. Cur cursive, romantic. I don't know. <laughs> I just started writing my natural script, um, which I used to be really self-critical about. I used to think I don't like my handwriting, and then I got over it. Um, how I wish to pray in your blessed masjid. And feel the breeze of your beautiful illuminated I'm always searching for my home with you. So if I went back and I tried to read this, I really couldn't because I don't remember, and I didn't write that clearly, but let's see. I, so I wrote, you are the star of my heart. You light, your light never fades. This is a light of your sincerity. Your sincerity taught us sincerity, which we seek and only find in following you. My dearest friend, you... Um, I wish to pray in your masjid, your blessed masjid, and feel the breeze of your beautiful illuminated city. I'm always searching for my home with you. So that's what came up from, so I would love to hear what some of you said. You were even caring to everyone you were sharing, the best friend you are, and you wish to save us from the nar. Mashallah, you wrote that a uh, nice. So now um, this is my main composition and now I'm gonna go with color and pen. 
I'm gonna go with pen first. So I have a black tip. This has so much paint on it. <laughs> I'm self-conscious. Um, I need to find a clean looking one. But if I can't, then we are, look, this is shiny. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go over my lines and make them dark. And I'll go over my writing and try and adjust it to the way that I feel looks the way I want. And then I can add color. And anybody else who wants to share their writing, we'd love to hear it. Warm our hearts on the furnace of the warm, beloved, illuminated star. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You were brave. You're adding more, you're adding more, you're adding more, good. The main thing about writing is like, don't judge because you never write anything if you judge yourself. You have to first just allow yourself to translate feelings. So first identify your feelings and then you have to find the words to express the feelings. Words are like symbols. They're only um, an approximation of the way you feel, but we can never really ever find exactly the way to say how we feel. We can, that's why there's a difference between words and feelings. Bismillah. Because that's also your secret with you and Allah. The Allah, you, Allah is one that reads and translates your heart. Allah knows your feelings and can translate those feelings into real meaning. What does your feelings really mean? What do your feelings really mean? And that's something that is a reality the whole life. From when you're young and you rely on your parents and when you get older, and you are a parent, inshallah, or even if you're you're not, um, and whatever you're, wherever you're at in life, or whatever it is that you're doing, it's only Allah who's really ever going to understand us. And that's something that you're lucky as a born Muslim, you can understand that from a young age, because I became Muslim when I was about between 18 and 20 years old, so I didn't know that <laughs> until I was old, and. Um, and then, you know, you learn, you learn, you have to learn how to live that, like that really only Allah is the only one who's really, 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 really going to understand you. And everyone else will sort of get you and you can have really good friends and you can learn from others and you can share with others and, and you can have a great life with other people. But the only one who really knows the inner workings of you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now I'm going to go over my words, but I'm going to try and probably fix them up a little bit. Make them look kind of prettier. You know how they put like, um, I need to spotlight this so that. There we go. Okay, you are the star of my heart. I'm actually going to do my outside line so I don't lose track of my outside rim. So the best way to trace a line is to do a little at a time. And then don't try and keep stretching your arm to get down to it. Nope, move your paper. And then go and back and find the line and go over it again. Until you feel like you have to start bending your wrist. And then you stop and you move your paper. Because if you have to bend your wrist, that's going to make a, a little mark. Um, like it's going to make a edge. Let's 
to the he's here's one thing I like. your love is like an arrow that never leaves me oh wow that's so beautiful wow yes his love has pierced our hearts and it is a permanent wound of love from which all blessings pour Yeah, you can add decoration. So now it's, um, you know, it's like always these things I'm offering here are a suggestion. You know, you're not graded on this um, or anything. It's just um, an exploration of art. So I always encourage you to, you know, in, implement your own styles as well. Light never fades. What, what is what we are doing called? Um, well, I called it free flow poetry. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just called it free flow poetry, but basically it's expressing your heart in a way that's non-judgmental of normal writing form. So normal writing form is going to have a lot of rules um, of grammar, um, but you can escape that by writing free flow poetry, which is writing the closest thing of your feelings um, into words without having to judge your grammar. But good spelling should, should be, you know, you should try and apply that. Prophet Muhammad's lies. I'm the last messenger sent to all mankind. Never gave up to spread the message. Never gave up. Never gave up. Love it. I love it. That's so important to remember. He never gave up. That is so important. You're done, okay. Can you show us? Do you feel like it, Samiha? If you feel like it, no pressure. But um, yeah, Muzakar, yeah, then color it. You don't have a camera? Oh, no problem, okay, inshallah. Um, but um, sure, Muzakar, you can uh, col color it in. I'm gonna color mine in once I get to it. Also like my handwriting. So I think it's more important to have, to be able to express your feelings and just to outpour your emotions um, than it is to have perfect handwriting. So that's also not the goal of this. Um, so I'm, I'm not bothered um, by that. <laughs> Oh, I really wish we could go to Medina, <laughs> inshallah, I mean, but I think there's no um, visas now. Inshallah, we can, inshallah. You're going to pray now, Khadija, in Sauda? You don't have a camera? Okay. All right, Khadija, pray for us, okay? Pray for us that Allah helps us and guides us as well and and helps us and always unites us on things that are good, okay? Thank you for attending. Always nice to see you here.
always searching for my home with you. And I'm gonna write peace and blessings be upon you. So now I'm happy I've got like, when you say what you feel and you say what you mean, it's just like something amazing happens inside you, your chest. You just feel like I said what I meant. I meant what I said. And then you just feel like a relief, you know? And you feel so good, like relaxed. And I just feel like that right now. Does anybody else get that feeling? Walaikumussalam. Yes. Oh yeah, you can use markers, but just markers can be a little bit, you know, they're heavy. So you have to be careful. You know, they're a lot of times they're thick. And so you just have to be a little careful because they're very permanent, basically. I mean, even if they're washable on paper, they're just, um, they make thick lines. So I don't usually work with, I don't, I don't play with markers too much. I have some thin tip markers, but I usually use the gel pen, but I do like how, how markers make the colors really bold. I like that. Yeah, it's, oh yeah, washable. It's washable, but like, even if you put a washable um, marker on paper, um, once it's down, you can't, it's hard to fix. If you made a mistake, but you're not making any mistakes, of course. Okay, so I'm gonna make mine, I'm gonna pick a color theme too. I think I'm gonna make mine red and, and purple. I like that with some yellow. So I'm gonna make a yellow center. First, I wanna erase any lines so it doesn't get, you know, dark. So I'll make the center yellow and then I'll make red and purple. Which one purple? I'm gonna put purple here. Have any of you made a knot like this, a methal like this before? Um, have you ever used this process? This type, no? How did you make it like so that it was symmetrical? I mean, this is the only way I've ever really known how to do it. And I don't know, I guess I'd love to know the other ways because I see a lot of people do these projects, but I don't know how they accomplish it. mosaic with the sun paper oh that sounds so nice yeah that's what I was mentioning before that would be I've never done that but um I would like that I would like to have that you know in every room in my house hmm. by the window also because that always resem resembles stained glass which is so beautiful I'm a huge fan of stained glass
I have some stained glass old windows in my house. So old, old stuff. Um, and it's so nice, you know, they just don't make stuff like that anymore. All right, now I want to put some red in it. Uh, yes, in here I'll put red. You're almost done. Amazing. Wow, it's like, okay, you know what I'm talking about? Allah bless you, Qadisiya. You have the perfect name for this class because your name means sacred. This is one of the names of Allah, Al Qaddus. It's like the holy. Uh, it means something holy, something sacred, something sacrosanct. Which is the opposite of something mundane or something ordinary. How are people's coloring going? Muzakir, you said you were almost done, right? I also have to finish up because I have to close the meeting in a few minutes, but I want to finish this and then I might figure out. I have some, think about how I want to color this background, I think yellow. First, I just want to erase my pencil marks. There we go. Oh, bye, Aliyah. Wa alaikum as -salam. Oh, your night's gorgeous. How pretty. Good night. God bless everyone. I'm going to also close the meeting. Probably finish coloring the back with the yellow. Wa alaikum as -salam. Allah Hafiz. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye. Yusra, that's gorgeous. Wow, did you do that with marker? I love how strong the color is. You did great with that marker. Oh, Mazekar, it's gorgeous. I, it's so pretty. Wait, can you turn it the other way? I think you put it upside down. Turn it upside down. Yeah. Yes. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Wow. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to do this one yellow in the back on top of my poetry. And then it, it matches the front of this yellow part in the middle. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Yeah, now it looks like it's glowing and I think mine was about light and a star. Your love from your heart comes to mine, which brings peace to everyone. Oh my gosh, wow, Marapat, that is so beautiful. Wow, I really felt that in my heart. Yes. His love radiates. I mean, just think about the love from the prophet. It has reached so many generations. 
all over the globe, speaking different languages, but somehow in our hearts, it's like we all love him. And in a way, it's kind of like we all know him. In a way. Like he's a familiar to us. We know him, we've never seen him, but we can feel him. How is that possible? You think, wow, how is it that all these people can all feel this love for the Prophet and from all over the world? And you feel like this is truly a miracle. And it is truly the peace from God. So I'm going to close the meeting, um, all my darlings. And thank you for sharing this blessed night. And um, I'm honored by your gracious presence and all of your participation. Oh, Inaya, are you showing me? See, can you? Oh, it's gorgeous. Wow, it looks perfect. I love the shape too. Looks so nice. Good job. Yay. Oh, look at that. And then you use the template on the construction paper. Brilliant. Wow, now, yes, now you have duplicates. So you can use this too and put that on something. Wonderful. Oh, good night, everyone. May Allah bless you, take care of you, and may we always meet on goodness. Amin, amin. I'm going to close the meeting. So take care. Good night. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>